Hello again, this is Doug, the Two Minute Gardener, and today we're going to talk about how to relocate a rattlesnake. Now, as I've told you previously, I live in Tirasana, which is surrounded by all these canyons, and they have rattlesnakes in them. So I've had to train my dogs how to avoid those rattlesnakes, but once in a while we will come across a little bitty baby, and those things are really dangerous, especially for dogs because baby rattlesnakes do not have any kind of venom control. They will just bite and unleash all the venom they have in their body and that can kill a dog. So whenever I come across one, I'm gonna relocate it. Now, some people like to kill them. I like to try and relocate them because they are excellent rat killers, mouse killers, and they control those vermin. But the most important part about relocating a rattlesnake is you gotta remember, that they can strike about half the distance of their body. So a six foot snake can strike about three feet. So to relocate them, you want a long shovel, something with at least a three foot handle and preferably a square edge. Why a square edge? Watch what happens when I try to scoop up this snake with a pointed shovel and not a square shovel. There he is, going for it, trying to use the rake to get in there, oh, and he drops it. Yeah, that's why you want to have a square-ended shovel, because they're just so much easier. They're designed to scoop things up, whereas pointed shovelers are designed to dig. So on the second try, I got him in the crate. So you want to have a nice long shovel, and then you want to have some kind of crate that you can uh, put a lid on it. Now, the shovel that's right there in the photo, that one you can actually get via my Amazon link. Um, so that's on the video description if you want to get a nice big snake handling shovel. Anyway, the snake is in the crate. Now, if there was a big snake, yeah, I gotta put a lid on it because those snakes can again strike two to three feet. This little fellow was less than two feet and I'm keeping him at one end of the crate. Um, so he's not going to do a whole lot of damage down there. Still have to be very careful handling this guy. But again, if you have a big snake, you have to put it on a lid on it before you transport it anywhere. So this guy, and again, I live across the street from a canyon. I just walk this guy right on over. Now, he was a little reluctant to get out of the crate. He was pretty darn scared. And in fact, at one point, this snake was coiled up and ready to strike me. He was getting pissed. So I tried to kind of shush him out and uh, he did not want to come out. So I realized this guy's not going to come out of this, the crate, even though the wide open canyon is right there. So finally, I just reached over and said, fine, you know what? We're going to take the airplane method and launch your butt off the, the side of this cliff. Um, like we're launching you off an aircraft carrier. So on the count of three, one, two, three, th oh, there it goes into the canyon and we've relocated. Be free, little fella, go kill those rats but stay away from my dogs. Well, there you go. That's the quick two minute version of how to relocate a rattlesnake. Make sure to be careful when you're doing this. And if you have any doubts, call a professional, take care of it. Well, that's all the time we have for today. This is Doug, the Two Minute Gardener. Make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe. We will see you next time.